As Tlingit Indians of Southeast Alaska, we share a bond with our ancestors that is sacred. Our ancestors tie us to our history, our customs, our very identity. To honor them and stay connected with our past, we carve ceremonial hats in the form of animals representing our clan crests. Some are hundreds of years old. These hats hold the spirits of the clan's ancestors and are an important bridge between the past and the present. They are what we Tlingit call at u In 2019, the Tlingit Kiksadi clan held a ceremony to dedicate a brand new at u a sacred Kiksadi hat with the face of a sculpin fish, one of the clan's crest animals, carved on it. But this wasn't just a new hat. It was a detailed reproduction of a broken Tlingit hat that had been missing from the clan and was stored on the shelves of the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History for over 130 years. I'm Eric Hollinger, I'm a tribal liaison for the Repatriation Office at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. And we're here today for a ceremony where the Smithsonian will transfer an object that the Smithsonian helped the Klingit Kiksadi clan you make. This is from a broken clan hat that was in the Smithsonian's collections for 130 years. The Smithsonian worked with the clan to digitize it, digitally repair it, and make a new hat for the clan to bring to life again and replace the original hat. The community is preparing behind us, setting up. They're arranging other clan objects that they have, and we're preparing a housing to cover the replica hat so that it will be able to be unveiled. We are ready to bring in the old sculpin hat and the new one. And we're taking one very small step towards recognizing the damage that was done to Native American populations by the arrival of humans from Europe. But the whole idea of 3D scanning opens up a whole new world of sharing the content between the museum collections and the tribe. I feel a great sense of relief and happiness that we're finally here today. We're breathing life back into something that we thought was dead a long time ago. This is the way life should be. Not someone you've given up hope of ever seeing again and suddenly they come walking around the corner. Most museum objects finish their lives in a collection. This is a story of the opposite, where new technology gives a sacred piece of atu a second chance to be returned to its true owners. In 2014, Ray Wilson Sr., leader of the Kiksadi clan of Sitka, Alaska, traveled to Washington, D.C. to meet the original hat and begin the process of making a new replica hat. It was Ray's job to explain to his ancestors, whose spirits lived within the hat, about the process ahead. I'm here to try to explain to you what's gonna to happen to you. These people that are standing in here are gonna make a replica of you. They're not gonna do you any harm. This is a new technology, and we hope that it's all right with our ancestors. We know it's a big step for us as second people. Eventually, you're gonna get back to Alaska to go back home. The spirits in these hats are powerful. I believe that they're coming back to help the uh, second people. There's a period of 70 years or more where we weren't allowed to practice our, our culture, all that history is lost, so we're trying to get it back. In a traditional museum repatriation, important objects are usually just returned to their rightful owners. But the old sculpin hat was badly broken, and the Kiksadi wanted a hat they could use in ceremonies. For a long time, you know, we, we've asked the question, you know, how are we going to use this new technical age? How is this going to help our children down the road? So they decided to take a revolutionary new path, 
combining cultural traditions with cutting-edge technology. I will now ask our, our Eagle Brothers to move the hat over to the digitizing table. With the go-ahead from Ray, Smithsonian's digitization program office got to work. Previous analysis of the hat revealed 175 holes where hair, feathers, and skin of ermine, deer, eagle, and swan had been attached. The markings told of the hat's history, but cracks also left it too fragile to wear again. So the wonderful thing about 3D scanning is we're able to document the object, capture it from all the different angles, bring that data back into the real world through 3D printing, through CNC machining, and all of that is done without touching the object. So it's an extremely non-invasive process. I can hand this over to you and what you need to do is just press that up and that turns it on. Kaguantan clan leader Andrew Gamble was the first to use the scanner. In Tlingit culture, work on at Uwu is to be carried out by members of an opposite clan, so it was important that Andrew from the Wolf Clan began the scanning for his raven brothers. And I'll slowly rotate the object for you as you move up and down. The initial idea for the project began in 2012. Harold Jacobs, cultural specialist for the Tlingit and Haida Central Council, saw the broken hat and asked about restoring it. Scan to the top and then scan to the bottom and then rotate it just a, a little bit. First, the size and shape of the hat was captured. If you get a little bit closer to the object, you'll see it pop up on the screen. There you go, you're in the sweet spot. Next, precise color information was measured. I'm getting enough resolution that we'll be able to replicate all these individual carving marks. After a day of work, the team pieced together the hat's digital presence. First shape, then color. But there is still a piece missing. Using millions of measurement points from the 3D scan data, the Smithsonian Institution's exhibit team digitally sculpted sections of the missing rim and filled cracks. The broken potlatch cylinder was also fixed and realigned. The data formed a blueprint of the hat when it was first created, a set of instructions for the replica hat to be carved. The Kiksati found and felled an alder tree near Juno with a large enough diameter for the new hat. It was carefully packaged for a trip to Washington where work would begin carving the new hat. To get started, the 3D scanning files were translated into a series of commands telling the mill what direction to move and how deep to carve. From a cultural perspective, getting started also took careful consideration. Like with the scanning, it was important that members of an opposite clan carve and paint the hat. Smithsonian Exhibit's model maker, Chris Holschwander, was adopted by the Kiksadi's opposite clan, the Kaguantan. After more precise movements of the milling blade, a sculpin fish head slowly began to emerge from the alder wood block. Ray Wilson asked Deshiton clan leader Joe Zuboff to supervise the final touches. The wood base and potlatch cylinder were painted based on the original. Hide and sinew were sourced by the clan from Alaskan deer. Ermine skins and shell for the eyes and teeth came from Juno. All in preparation for a return to Alaska and its rightful owners. We'd like to say welcome and achish for being here to witness what is happening. Achish for your presence. These are sea lion whiskers. These whiskers represent water coming off the back of the sculpin. So the spray behind his eyes. We're about to do the signing for transferring the property of the, the hat that the Smithsonian made over to the clan. So they will own it from here forward. 
What I'm seeing here is that bringing this hat back is a really meaningful thing for the people here in Southeast Alaska. Can I borrow that pen, Ray? Okay. You've created this new pathway for getting things back to us, and who knows where it's going to go. But ultimately, I think we're adding value to the community, and we're adding value to the museum collection. You are the proud owner of a new hat. Thank you. <laughs> When we 3D scan objects, they've had their story, their story is often in the past. With this project, we're 3D scanning an object and it's beginning its new life. And when that hat was put on Ray's head, he breathed new life into the hat. All these things were not made to be sitting on the shelf. They were made to be used. That's why they were made. You put your spirit into that hat, and the future generations are going to use that spirit. Now it's going to be with us until the end of its days, and it will never leave Alaska again, ever. <laughs> <laughs>